Hey y'all, if any of y'all watch gaming videos on this channel and are watching this video, go check out my boy's channel down in the description. You know, he's pretty consistent, so if you're looking for something to watch, um, like, daily or every couple of days, um, that's a good channel to check out because he posts so often. And also, he has great content, like, and plays different types of games, so you won't just see the same game over and over like most gaming channels or some gaming channels are. So yeah, make sure you check him out and also comment down in his comment section Austin Mars TV sent me um, just to let him know um, what's up. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. What's up, this is Austin Mars TV back here with another video and today we just got a taper. So first thing you want to do is start off bottling out the bottom of the taper and then right above that go with lever closed and then work on blending those together by slowly closing the lever as you go down. Some textures will be like harder to do this since they might not blend as well. But once you get that knocked out, you just want to go with 1 8 guard open right above that and then 1 8 guard closed right below the 1 8 guard open. And you know that should give you a pretty good foundation. Now you just want to use higher guards such as the 1 4th guard and you might have to go even higher to blend into the top like since this is a disconnected blend I didn't have to go any higher since I just cut it all the way up to like where you see where the line parts the faded hair and the longer hair but yeah you might have to go higher than just the 1 4th guard but right here we're taking the 1 16th guard right below the 1 8th guard uh, closed and we're just using it to knock out the bottom guideline of the fade and also you can down fade so like if there's any hair like sticking out, out from the head, it can knock that hair off as well. But always make sure like when you down fade with a lower guard than what you hit, make sure you're going against the, or not against the grain, with the grain. So you don't create another guideline. But right here we're just doing detail work, touch up work. Like remember the areas you use wet guards in. And so just go back with those guards that you used in those areas and touch it up if you see any spots that need to be. And then same thing for the back. You know, it might sound confusing like if you're just now starting it out because I know a whole lot of people say like it goes by fast when I'm recording and stuff. But like once you actually get to doing it, it isn't all that complicated. It's just it's, it's simple just transitioning of guards like first you do close then you do open then you fade those together then you do the 1 8 guard you know open and close and then you do like 1 4th guard and then the 1 16th guard and then you're basically done you just gotta all it is that makes it sound complicated is like opening it and closing it and stuff but like when you actually do it it's not as hard as you think it just takes practice and all that. Yeah, and you don't have to do them in the exact order I do them. It can be like um, different orders. It just depends on the hair texture. I just like doing it like this with the hair texture I was working with in this video. But yeah, I'm trying to keep like a um, it down to like where beginners and like advanced people can understand I know it still sounds complicated at first but you know trust me if you I know a whole lot of people hit me up saying they haven't cut before and they watch my videos but all you have to do is be careful and just make sure you use every guard open and close and like um, just try your best don't give up on anything because I know at first you might like um, start out and as soon as you do the bog guy line you think you done went too far and everything but you know just don't push it up just work on getting out the lines and stay in the area you originally made the line in I know at first when you start out it's gonna be hard but um, you know it gets pretty easy after a while so yeah this texture of hair it's not really the easiest hair uh, to blend He's got like an Indian type of texture here. I know I used him in the older video and people like swore he had a kid in his head. Like 
they all thought he had an S curl, but this is his natural hair. And like, it's a good texture once it's faded, but like, it's real. I don't really know how to explain like what word to use, but like, I, I just can't put a word on it. But it also grows in different directions, and like the texture of hair in some areas, if you use the wrong guard or go up too high, it'll be harder to blend. But once it's blended, this hair texture looks really good. So on the side I did originally, it grew straight down and you're gonna see when I go to the next side, um, it grows like backwards. So that's one of the things that made it more difficult. Like right here, this side is the one that grows straight down. I guess I did the one that grows backwards first. So like when I fade them, they're gonna look a little bit different, but it's just the way the hair grows and you just gotta work with what you got. So, but go through the same steps, just go against the grain when fading up. Just make sure like if it's going back, you gotta go at an angle like sideways to go against the grain. But yeah, same steps, lever uh, close, lever open, uh, fade them together. Then you know the one eighth guard open, one eighth guard closed, then one fourth guard, then one sixteenth guard to finish it up. And you all just don't understand first starting out like that's like it's just transitioning guards like once you learn how to fade every different type of cut is fading like i've already said in one of my past videos tapers ball fades um shadow fades all of it is just the same blending techniques just maybe faded in a different area or like you might not go as low like cut the hair as low with some of the type of haircuts Even like tapers, it's all blending. There's all types of different tapers. It's just where you put your guidelines in and like also how low you go. So yeah, you see that side, it grows backwards so it kind of looks weird. But right here, um, his hair, I didn't cut his hair down behind his ear. Like it, it doesn't really match too much to me. But since it's already cut down, I took a one guard and like just cut it down so I could get any of the hair sticking out and also so it made a more crisp lining. And I also sprayed it with some holding spray. So yeah, if their hair isn't already like this and you're just starting out, I wouldn't really recommend it unless they ask for it because like right here, or on the other side it looked really disconnected it just depends on the hair texture um it can make a more crisp lining but like to me it just wasn't really necessary because before when he didn't have it cut down it still had a pretty good lining right there but yeah when you when i start lining him up soon right here you're gonna start seeing the white line. Just don't push it back and all that. And I didn't have to, I was like barely tapping it. Um, and it's because I had a clean surface. So the keys to getting the white lining is three things. You gotta have a clean surface, whether you like clean the skin off with alcohol or a witch hazel or astringent or something, or a shampoo would be the best to clean it off. But a clean surface, then you want to use holding spray and then you also want to have a trimmer that hits and also they got to be the right skin tone like you couldn't have someone just white or it wouldn't show up as good um it it just is all those elements put together and it just leaves a really crisp uh, white line or even like my color um the white line i can have my hair shampooed holding spray and all that the white line doesn't uh, show up like that on my skin uh, tone either. So yeah, just keep it natural. I'm trying to show y'all different angles. So like in the back on this side, it kind of look looks like angle different from the other side. But it's just how I had the camera. As you can see, it's still slanted the same way as the other side.
And another main thing I want to point out before y'all get in the comments saying I made his hairline crooked or something. He had his hand or his head angled to the right side, like right or left side, I forgot. But the whole time, like I was doing guidelines and also lining up the front, it made it look crooked because he just kept on angling his head. Like, um, even when I uh, positioned it straight, he would always like lean to the right side or left side. I forgot which one, but you know, just so y'all don't get in the comments on my top about that. So yeah, as you can see, here's the side that grows backwards. So it's going to um, look a little different than the other side. Like we tried to match it up as good as I could to the uh, side that grows straight down. But yeah, you just gotta work with what you got. And I know it looks lighter. Um, I had turned up the ISO on the camera and that's what made it look lighter. It still was cut down the same, like it had the same length. It's just the direction of the hair and also my camera settings at the time. And you're going to see at the end of the video all of this. You just want to really take your time on the lineup. This is probably one of the most important parts. Like, even when I first started cutting, it wasn't that cold at fading. Um, the main reason people went to me was because of my linings. Like, my fades was decent, but my linings was pretty sharp. So yeah, there's not much I can say about the lining because every single person's hairline is different no matter what. There's always going to be like cowlicks here and there or the person's hairline is going to be off naturally. You just got to learn to work with what you got and just learn how to even it out and like don't push it back. Like keep it as natural as you can while making it uh, sharp. y'all see that ash line coming in um and by the way if y'all was wondering what kind of holding spray i used in this video it was a uh, tresemme like i think that's how you say it tresemme whatever it's called you can get it at like local stores i think they even have it at dollar general but it's a really high quality holding spray in my opinion it's probably the best one i've used it's like five dollars a bottle so it's kind of expensive compared to other ones but um i would recommend it um, and I think I got level, it's, I'm pretty sure it was level 3 holding spray. I heard like using level 5 and 4s and stuff, they like clog up your clippers because of like how thick they are or something. But yeah, you see right here how he keeps leaning his head. Even now, it's still angled. Like, even when I pulled it to the middle, it would still be angled to the side a little bit. Uh, I guess that's just how he likes to hold his head or something. I'm not really sure, but the lining was straight in this video. So right here, we're just doing the finishing touches on the lineup. You know, just trying to get it as sharp as possible. Um, and that was even with without a razor. It, it, and it was still looking sharp. But you can see how it came in looking before. And here goes after. You know, game changing haircut. Looks like a totally different person, man. So, leave a like if you enjoyed or if you learned something. Let me know what y'all think about it down in the comments. And also subscribe if you're not already. But I'm just going to let these uh, clips of the finished product play out. But this is Austin Mars TV, and I'm out.